I've made it a habit of doing an introductory video to MIE 100 Dynamics every year, and I still find value in it, so I thought I'd do it again, even though one of the drivers in the past was COVID-19. So same thing as usual, which is what are we doing this year? And in light of the many controversies about artificial intelligence, chat GPT, Bing chat, and all the rest, how are those tools useful in this course? So some interesting the instructors this year are me, Professor Sullivan, uh, and in the other sections are Professor Jazinazada, uh, Professor Erho, Professor St. Clair, and Professor Mbabi. So this year, like previous years, we're going to do the same thing, which is provide you a set of videos, a large number of videos. So oh, there's a lot of support in the course, so just so you're aware. and one thing that we will sort of look at, for example, here's a very short form video of, of basically what, what is the first lecture of this course, which is uh, particle position, velocity, and acceleration. This is a very quick sort of skip through it, and it's only to give you a taste. As well, notes and lectures are going to be provided for a number of sections, my section in particular, but I expect other sections will also follow also. You'll get these kind of notes. So in all likelihood, I will continue to provide what ends up being a set of very old notes at this point, surprisingly. It's only 2022, as you can see in there. And those notes uh, will be available. A set of notes I created last year, and this year I've changed them, so we'll see what happens. But basically, you get a whole bunch of stuff, and hopefully that helps deal with some of the stress that comes from having to do multiple exams and multiple questions, or multiple exams across multiple courses simultaneously. You're going to see something like this on a weekly basis. Again, I'm not sure exactly how to look, but it'll give you chapters. It'll give you uh, information from Merriam and Craig, so the text. Uh, lecture is going to cover what lecture number that should correspond to. So, for example, uh, lecture 1, 1B, I, it's not really 1B, it's 1, uh, 2, and 3. Uh, concept or practical. So, for example, chapter 12, there are a lot of concept videos because there are a lot of concepts in that section. Practical are examples, and I encourage you to try and do those examples on your own and use those lectures, those videos, as useful tools to help you practice against and hopefully answer some of the questions you may have. Uh, title. So definitions of various things um, that we are going to look at, and then a description of what the video uh, is going to cover. So pretty much everything there, um, the little green line that you're seeing is actually from a, refers to the former text, a Hibbler. Um, and in the past, I had tried to keep both texts uh, in parallel, but for now I'm going to switch entirely to Mary McCraig. So titles and sections. So I think it's helpful. Oh, sorry, it is chapter two for Mary McCraig. Here is the text, Mary McCraig, Mary McCraig and Bolton. Uh, we're using the ninth edition. Uh, homework is on Wiley Plus. You really must use Wiley Plus to do this. By December 20th, 2023, and I hope uh, we will do it by then, don't worry about it too much. If it's not quite there, your account will be created on, MA, uh, on Wiley Plus and you'll have 
been enrolled in your course for MIA 100. So you'll just have to log in. You should get an email to your U of Toronto account from noreply at wileyplus.com. Uh, this is going to be something I repeat ad admirably uh, frequently in this talk. Always use G equals 9.81 meters per second squared for gravitational acceleration. If you're retaking the course, please contact MIE 100 admin uh, for some options. And that's for administrative issues uh, related to the course. Uh, that is the email to use. We cover a lot of material in this course. So chapters one, two, uh, kinematics of particles, three, four, kinetics, five, plain kinematics of rigid bodies six, plane kinetics of rigid bodies, and finally, uh, chapter eight, vibrations and time response. Basically, one to four is one set of concepts, five to six is another set of concepts, and eight is the final concept in the course. Chapter two is the probably the most intense in terms of new ideas. Every other chapter is primarily one or two ideas per chapter. If you look at the syllabus, the tutorial start on Friday, January 12th. We have 12 sections and the dates start um, for again from Friday, January 12th, uh, but we cover Monday, I think Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as well. One thing that we have found useful and will continue to use is Piazza because it's a great way for you guys to one, talk amongst yourselves, and two, for us to step in and offer advice uh, on an informal basis outside of office hours. In terms of the marks for the course, the final exam is 50%, the first quiz is 15%, the midterm is 25%, and the online assignments are 10. The quiz, midterm, and final are in person, uh, we're not expecting a COVID situation, so there you go. All of will be done with crowd mark, excuse me. And one thing, just so you're aware, at, at the time of this recording, date, time, and location were set, but sometimes these change. And please keep an eye on Quirkus to make sure that you know where things should be. Let's start with some basics in, in the course. Largely, uh, this is a great article. Um, you can probably get it on your own, but how to ace physics class, even if you don't ace physics from Rhett Allen. Um, I, I think this is one of the more practical, simple sets of advice that I have seen, and I certainly encourage you to try it. Talk to your professor and TA. We're happy to talk with you. Come to office hours, however they are offered. Um, one thing that I kind of would add here is that come to office hours, we're lonely, we like to talk. Uh, material online can be great, but sometimes you have to be careful and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Asking helps me know what I'm missing in a, it, it, when I'm missing a helpful explanation. Um, if, if I just talk and everybody sort of seems to be nodding, I assume everybody's happy. Work with other students, this is, uh, in light of some of the experience of your, your classmates from a couple of years ago, now it's easier to go to the library and talk to friends. Um, the engineering, SciMeds uh, libraries are both really good ones, and I certainly encourage you to sit there. They've got really nice tables, nice views, and it's kind of fun to sit in those rooms. Online is actually better than okay. Um, if you want and you feel comfortable working from home, Teams, um, Zoom, however it is, it's really good to collaborate. And frankly, uh, in my case, a lot of my, my good friends ended up uh, coming out of this. The text is great. Um, if you can, please look at the material in advance. There's a, it's helpful to you, it's helpful to me. Solve problems in the text on your own. Only look at solutions when you're really stuck. Don't just copy a solution down and assume you know it. Uh, it's often very clear in lecture what every, everything that happened and how it all sort of worked out. But when you try it on your own, you find out what actually causes you to get stuck. 
use those uh, practical YouTube lectures to follow up on concepts covered and try guided problems. The Wiley Plus has some really good, and one of the reasons why we use Wiley Plus, uh, they have great video solutions. It's hard in first year. You've got, I, I did a calculation for a talk I did last year, or yeah, last year, um, for lo or looking at the number of exams first year students have uh, versus the number of weeks. And basically six weeks out of 13 are devoted to exams. So that's a lot. So the goal and the reason why you see the MIU 100 lectures uh, online and online videos, all sorts of stuff, those are there to help you if you cannot really keep up or really focus in lecture. But as much as you can, do try to keep up with material. We try to help, but there are limits to what we can do. Okay, just one minor thing that always causes me a lot of grief. Uh, G is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. I kept, I had a problem that I had to solve and I kept ending up slightly off of the textbook solution and I couldn't figure out why until I added in that final digit. So it was enough to sort of trigger a, a, a lot of extra work that was unnecessary. If you want sort of a quick guide of what you need to know to sort of survive, you can say, look, I've got to do uh, Unit conversion and doing calculations with units is probably the most important thing that you do. Clunk, clunk. So just canceling out the units, writing that out nicely and writing 3,600 here, while the quantity is correct, it is not the correct answer. You really need to write 3,600 meters squared per hour. This answer is correct because you have the units attached. And so one of the things that will often come up in an exam is why did I get dinged for this? Well, you got dinged in part because you didn't really write the answer out. Triangle relationships are something that everybody should know and you should sort of have uh, with you at all times. You have law of sine, sine cap A over A is equal to sine cap B over B equals sine C over cap C over C. Uh, you can use all of them and you should sort of have them in your notes so that when you deal with a geometry problem, when we deal with a lot of geometry problems, you will find that helpful. Okay, I, 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 I guess I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but keep up with material, watch videos to really try and understand ideas. One of the things that you should do is again, do a problem, solve it, satisfy yourself that you understand the solution, and then go back on and look at the solution to see when you get stuck. Don't depend on intuition. Whatever anyone tells you about intuition, you are not intuitive. Nobody knows the solution to things. Everything is wrong when you go through all of these things. It's often easier to solve everything and sort of think about it and develop the experience that leads to intuition. And that intuition comes from years and years of experience. Take notes, do the problems, ask questions. We hopefully will offer you enough opportunity to ask questions that you can really progress in the course. The instructors like this material. I like this material. It's an interesting area and it's a fun set of new ideas. Draw pictures draw really nice pictures. It's really exasperating where somebody tries to solve a problem and they really understood the concepts, but they didn't draw a picture and so messed up, say, in this particular figure, sine theta and cos theta. I have used for a number of years SMATH Desktop. I find it's great. Um, I think it's called SMATH Solver now and MathCAD Prime. MathCAD Prime is really good. I really wish we could get a version of it. And if you're asking for something from the faculty, ask them to give you either Maple or MathCAD Prime so that you can start to use computer algebra on your own. One of the things it does is 
encourage you, both of those packages, to use units in your calculation. And the more times that you use units, the more apparent it is that it is useful and important to have them there. Chat GPT, everybody gets excited about it. I, I'm using, I, 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 last year I did an example and things didn't quite work out really well with Chat GPT, but Bing is using Chat GPT 4. Uh, everything I, I'm saying here is really valid only for MIE 100, and I certainly encourage you as part of this course to try it. So, I'm going to solve this problem. So I chose a problem that was just a word problem. There's a figure and I'll show the figure later. Uh, ball one is launched with an initial vertical velocity V1 equals 160 feet per second. Three seconds later, ball two is launched with initial vertical velocity V2. What is V2 if the uh, balls are to collide at an altitude of 300 feet? At the instant of collision is ball one ascending or descending. So it, it sort of starts the answer and it makes something that looks pretty good. Um, so you can see that there's a nice explanation. They collide at 300 feet. We set delta y to be 300 feet. Okay, ball is one is launched with 160 feet per second and three seconds later, ball two. So these, these set, this setup is actually correct. It's a really good way to do it. Using the quadratic formula, you get this and everything's great. We know everything is fine and we get 1.875 seconds, which is not correct. All right, uh, oh, okay, that's, I'm, I'm going to show it later, but let's continue. Um, so I asked it to give me the two roots for time because it calculated time and it said 4.08 seconds and 9.23 seconds. And so I said, ah, oh, that's not quite right. So your solution for the second ball, it, its solution is wrong, but if it had solved for the quadratic correctly, it would have gotten a negative time for the second launch. So it's, you know, I apologize for the error. Is it, chat GPT is really gentle in terms of response, but it continues. And so it sort of gives a solution and it says that the initial velocity of ball two is approximately 130 feet per second. At the instant, ball one is ascending. And again, it's not quite the right solution. Uh, no, ball one is descending. The two solutions are 2.51 seconds. And so it's, it's slightly, it depends on your gravity term. Uh, apologize, you're correct. Ball one is descending at the time of conclusion. So it, it kind of agrees with me. It then says, okay, and therefore the initial vertical velocity of ball two is 50, ball one is descending. Okay, uh, apologize. I calculate a vertical velocity of ball two for 139 feet per second. You are correct. Okay, so it's funny because really what's happened here is that it's come up with a solution. It's sort of, it's, defended it very well, but then I keep pushing back and it says, well, okay, maybe you're right. And it sort of gives me the same numbers as I gave it. And the response is a bit odd because it's agreeing, but it's not really seeming to solve the problem. Let's probe a little more. Show me the corrected solution. And so it shows me the corrected solution, kind of jumps to time right here, which is sort of the last equation on that uh, screenshot. And it says, okay, the time of flight is approximately 7.44 seconds, vertical velocity. So it gives me the exact same answers as I got, but it doesn't really solve it, which is kind of weird. Um, does your T equation have a negative root? That was the other thing that it sort of had picked up. No, uh, it's positive and we can discard the negative root, but there's no negative root there. Uh, therefore, the two roots are approximately 2.5 and 7.4. So that's not really the right answer because there are only two roots to the equation. So there can't be a third root, which it seems to be implying. All right. So lots of discussion with ChatGPT. And in the end, I felt like it agreed with me, but I didn't really see that it understood. So where I found it useful was not the solution but I did like the explanations. I thought the explanations are not bad. And my previous experience with it was that it was actually pretty good at this. So the other thing that I tend to use is Wolfram Alpha. I find Wolfram Alpha is great. 
Um, but I need to put all the numbers in correctly. So my gravitational acceleration, I use a slightly different number in both cases, by the way. I get 32.17 in this feet per second squared. I, I then saw through everything equals zero gets, and the roots are correct here. So if I set up the equation, I get the right equation or answers. So finally, I used SMATH desktop, and you'll notice here uh, that when I did this, I used gravity, I defined it. So if you put grav colon, that's you defining something. If you write grav equals and switch units, you get the value in the units you're interested in. All of the rest of the terms I entered uh, directly, but I would just wanted to show one thing because one of the issues that has come up, we don't do any questions with English units on an exam. However, we do have a couple exam or homework problems, excuse me, homework problems where we do use English units. And no matter what, a regular problem there is that people try to solve the problems with 9.81 or 30, yeah, 9.81 meters per second squared. But they, because they don't write the units, they don't realize that they've made a mistake and they should put in 32.1718. So solving through for all the terms, solving through the, for the quadratic, you get all the right numbers and everything works out. And because I like 2001, it's a great video or a great movie uh, and you should watch it. And the special effects have surprisingly well uh, stood the uh, test of time. I kind of like throwing it at the end. Um, and it's good for angular momentum because of the space station. That's my excuse for including it. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in January and have a good winter break.